snickerdoodles. Oh, baby, I hope you're excited, because I sure am. We have a massive week ahead of us in terms of earnings, and you can see by this huge diagram in front of you, it's massive. Not the only thing massive here in this video, let me tell you. Just take a look. If I look down, I'm showing you something. It's my big toe. Pretty massive, still a little swollen. That being said, we're looking at the earnings for the week here. Uh, you already know, week starting um, July 24th. I hope you're excited. A little bit delayed, but I, uh, you know what, recording this here on Sunday. So if any of these companies reporting Monday report before I uh, post this, look, it's not my fault. Let me just tell you what I'm feeling. Okay, let's just get right into this, baby. Let's get into it. Starting Monday, the 24th, before open, with none other than Philips. Do I have anything to say about Philips? I really don't. Let's just be frankly honest with each other. Um, seems like a, a company that's a relic of the past, frankly, and I, I just don't really follow Philips that much. I don't. I really don't. Um, but not really in some of them. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm way off here. But uh, look, forget everything I said there. Forget everything I said. I don't have anything to say about Philips, but I uh, I respect them for what they're doing. But after them, we do have Domino's Pizza reporting. You all know I definitely have an interest there in uh, Domino's Pizza. What do I think about this? Well, let's just be real with each other. Um, well, I don't know. Something sounded like it unplugged there, and who knows? Clearly it wasn't the microphone. Sounds like it's still going. Um, but anyways... Domino's, the stock has been getting obliterated. Let's just be real with each other. We look at Domino's year to date. The thing's been a piece of trash in terms of stock price and what it's been able to do. Really poor. Now, well, is, is this earnings going to be enough to do it? Let's just be real with each other. We look and just as of late, something you can pretty consistently see. Investors aren't necessarily excited in these plays that have been consistently beating the market, right? That have been what they consider value plays. Um, investors aren't excited about that anymore. They're back into the growth tech plays yet again. So Domino's has just been kind of left by the wayside. I do think there'll be decent results here. Obviously, inflation is something that does hit them quite a bit. Um, no doubt about it. But hey, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens there. And yeah, definitely excited. Following them, we've got the Bank of Hawaii. Just to, just to you know, wrap up the pretty market on Monday. Um, Monday after close, a couple nice ones here, nothing I'm too necessarily excited about, um, starting with Cadence, uh, then NXP, uh, followed by Alexandria, nothing really to think about Alexandria, kind of tough to make a stock symbol for Alexandria, but ARE, you know what, I'll give them a, give them respect there, they tried their best, then we get boring, Brown and Brown Insurance, Bro, who the heck cares about these insurance companies? Shouldn't they not be able to trade publicly? Look, it's just not fair. Something about that seems a little suspect. Anyways, P, uh, PCA following them. Logitech. Now, talk about a company that's a thing of the past, Logitech. No, no, no they still make, uh, it's kind of crazy. They're still obviously the leader, the go-to for computer mice and um what else? Webcams. I mean, Logitech, they do it. They do it all still. It's kind of crazy. They're still really one of the, the main player in the, in the industry there. Um, Crown following them. F5. You know what? Brock Lesnar has a thing to say or two about them. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs, uh, Whirlpool make some great, great uh, washers and dryers. And F me. Just remembered. Did leave some clothing in the dryer, and this is genuine. I'm very just upset right now. I'm going to have to re-fluff that stuff because there's some work clothing in there. Don't want that wrinkly. You know I hate wrinkles. Okay, I hate freaking wrinkles. I don't have Whirlpool devices, though. Um, if I did, they'd be beeping beyond belief. Those new freaking, yeah, you ever heard those new washers and dryers, man? They go whenever the, the cycle's done, and they do it for about 18 minutes, and they put a reminder on. For every five minutes you don't touch it, they'll still be beeping. It's kind of crazy. They play a full song for you. Um, and then, anyways, we're going on to Tuesday now. First off with Jeffrey Dahmer coming up there. Uh, looks like from that first one. Who knows? Um, Next Era Energy to follow. Interesting one there, too. 
Verizon. We get a touch of the telecoms, which is pretty exciting because we do see we have T-Mobile a little bit later. The first of these really big telecom companies to report. Curious what you see on this one. I mean, um, obviously a company that uh, that does get a lot from new lines. It's really important in their partnerships. Um, they've been offering, you know, they owe, as they always do, get a free phone whenever you, you you join up. But this one's really based off of their install base because, yet again, uh, it's a company that's really just, I mean, at the end of the day, almost basically subscription-based. People pl pay for their plan, and that's about it. So that's how they make their money. Uh, Raytheon Technologies, <clears throat> definitely an exciting one. I'll be following it for sure. Not really any insight on this one either. GE has had a fantastic year, uh, the stock itself. It's really done a great job this year so far. Um, and there's a lot of momentum actually carrying into this. Now, the question is, again, one of those companies dated back from the past, but w what are they able to do here? I mean, I expect they're they're able to keep up the momentum, in my opinion. Sherwin-Williams, <clears throat> known for the paint. You know they're known for the paint. Um, home improvement, and, and we look at it, too. That's the main thing is home improvement. Still not necessarily as big as it was a couple years back, right? Now, house prices are still ridiculous, and people are working on home improvement projects instead of buying new houses, but people are still buying new houses at ridiculous rates. Let's just be real. They don't need the paint right away. They're not necessarily working on flipping houses as much because the houses aren't coming up as cheap. So, all things considered, definitely some negatives. Um, some headwinds that go into play with Sherman Williams that you need to consider. Moody's following them. Um, you know what? Uh, they they rate my credit top notch. I'll tell you that. Moody's rates it top notch. Triple M. You know 3M coming up. I hope you're excited about that too. Um, yeah, I mean, 3M is is exciting. Basic stuff, basic consumer staples type company. Nothing too exciting, really, but I, I, I said it was. I lied to you. It's not exciting. GM following them. <clears throat> now, this one I am definitely excited for, right? We got a couple of these auto manufacturers coming up. We took a look, uh, you know, not necessarily comparable from last week. We saw Tesla. It's really completely different from one of these legacy, um, legacy companies because they don't necessarily, I mean, Tesla only does EVs. These companies still have the, the classic ICE vehicles. So the question is, how do they do this quarter, right? A quarter in which, frankly, people are still spending at ridiculous rates. They're boosting credit. They're spending a lot more. They're taking out more loans. It's kind of crazy. I'm excited to see what this is, you know, uh, what, what this entails, mostly because from an economic standpoint, I, I'm really excited to see because I do think people are still overspending. I really think they do. Yeah, I really think they are. It's kind of crazy. I don't know how they're doing it. Um, I don't know. It's 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 crazy to see Kimberly Clark following them. Uh, New Core Technologies. <clears throat> then we have got MSCI, uh, Dow Industrials. There are sorry Dow. Uh, what the heck is that? I, I can't I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name. I'm so sorry. Spotify is reporting. Now this is one that you know what? Definitely one people are following. One of the big tech growth names. But yet again, it gets into that standpoint. Similar to a company that we saw with Netflix last uh, last week, it's entirely subscription-based, right? Now, there is some advertisement, and that does benefit them. But again, they pay a lot of that to the creator as well. So we'll have to see. Uh, ad rates improving does help them because they've got that benefit. But a lot of people aren't necessarily utilizing ads on Spotify, and it's all, all based off of how much they grow the user base. So we'll take a look at that. Biogen following them. And then Corning to wrap out the pre-market on Tuesday. Now, after close, we do have one of my focus stocks coming up here, and it's none other than Microsoft. Had to be Microsoft. You know it did. You want to know why? Because this is a stock that has gone up 43% this year alone, up $100 per share this year alone. Pretty massive. And you look on a full year basis, not quite even that good of a performance because it kind of struggled. Um, still up massively on a five-year horizon. So this is a stock that's had a lot of upward momentum. If you look as of late, it's definitely slowed down a little bit here in the last month. It has slowed down. Um, but still massive growth here year-to-date. There is no denying. Now we look at it and we want to know what are we expecting as far as the earnings. Well, I know obviously they're going to mention the massive uh, Microsoft Activision deal. That is taking place, right? They did postpone the actual closing of that sale, 
and they'll probably mention something here in this earnings call of the expected date on that one, since they did, in fact, postpone it. But other than that, look, there's a lot more to Microsoft than just that. We're going to talk about AI. No doubt AI will be mentioned quite a hefty bit in this earnings, and I think that's got a good, uh, definitely a good amount of pull here in, in what the stock decides to do. So, anyways, let's see what the estimates actually are and see what they're able to do here. So, expect a 255 on an EPS line versus 223 of a year ago. Pretty massive expectations there. That's really nice growth. Um, pretty consistent with, I think, what they, they've been able to do in terms of growth, and I'm not too shocked at it at all. Really not if they're able to hit that line. Now, from a revenue perspective, again, this is a company trading in a pretty high multiple here right now. I mean, we're talking about a multiple near 40, 37 P.E. ratio. Now, they're expected to grow this quarter by 7%, and this year only by just shy of 7%. That's a quite a hefty multiple for a company that's you know showing single-digit growth there. Now we must consider from a price to sales standpoint, um, right about a you know really about a one tenth in that aspect, right? Um, really ten times price to sales here is a pretty expensive stock. You know what happened with an expensive stock like that that did it last uh, last week? It was freaking Netflix trading in an incredibly high multiple, a very similar multiple in fact. And what did they show? They showed the next quarter they expected a 7% growth rate. Now, Microsoft kind of expecting the same. Now, not nearly the same company. We have to consider this. They're way different companies, and I think one of them warrants a higher multiple than the other. And which one is that? Well, and it's obviously Microsoft. There's a lot more facets to the business, and I believe that plays a big factor in this, right? And you even look the next year out, already expected 11% growth on top of this. There's a lot more to this business, and a lot more avenues in which they make revenue, unlike Netflix. Also, a lot of headwinds with Netflix. <clears throat> Microsoft, when they get this deal out of the way, really a lot of tailwinds, in my opinion. Um, now, a little bit of in terms of headwinds when you look at uh, how they plan on regulating AI, and obviously the big investment from Microsoft and AI, so we'll have to see what that looks like. I expect good things out of this quarter, and I think the positive momentum will continue, in all honesty. I really do. Um, <clears throat> following them, we have Google. The main thing I want to look at on Google here is going to be, um, I know they'll be highlighting things like their YouTube Plus um, subscribers, how many people they have. One thing I think they might tout here is they're, they're probably likely going to mention from a YouTube Live TV standpoint, um, you know, that they, they are the sole provider here of uh, NFL Sunday ticket, and I think they may actually mention a piece of that here because they will mention the subscribers in that aspect. And overall, uh, I know they'll talk about ad rates, and there's no doubt I think ad rates continue to rise here this quarter as well, which should be very positive uh, if you are Google. Very excited to that about this quarter for them. I think it's going to be pretty nice. Now, Visa, following them, definitely one I'm excited about. Um, we look at these credit companies, and I... You know, we've seen the data, and there is no doubt, credit spending continues to increase. People are still buying a lot of things with their credit cards, even if they don't have the money. Because we also see credit card delinquencies increasing in the same facet. So we're spending ridiculous amounts of money that we don't have, and we won't have it by the time the bills do. That's what's kind of crazy here and interesting to look at. So I'll be on, you know, keeping my eyes out really for that. Um, but I'm really excited about these earnings because that's a great play to, to look at the actual economy itself and kind of what time horizon we're looking at, right? I mean, if we see more and more delinquencies, you definitely could see something, you know, again, they're trying to pull back expectations of recession. But if 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 we see people cut back spending massively finally because they just run out of money, which they kind of already are, then that could lead to recession. There's no doubt about it, right? No doubt about it. Following them, Texas Instruments. Um, yeah, nothing really crazy to say about Texas Instruments. They make a mean graphing calculator. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, following them, something that you might see not only in my pants, also running for the Cleveland Browns, also playing defensive end for the None other than the uh, Denver Broncos. That's right. That's right. That wait. I think he ended up in Miami. Oh wow. Well, no, I I I I effed it. I'm sorry. Anyways, we've got Chubb following them. 
I was going for Nick Chubb and Bradley Chubb, for those of you who were astute. CNI uh, following that. Who knows where my mouse went? Oh, I found it. Waste management. Talk about a boring company. Not actually trashy. The company's not trash despite the business they're in. They are in the trash business, but they're not, in fact, trash. CoStar. Feel like that logo's been stolen. Snap is reporting here. Snapchat reporting after close. Look, you know I don't like uh, the company itself. I'm really not a big fan of the stock. And you want to know why? I've, I've said it a lot of the time. One of these days, there is going to be something. And again, it's going to come out. Um, there's still a lot of bots on this, right? Um, Snapchat Premium. I don't know who the heck's going to be using Snapchat Premium for one or plus, whatever it is. I don't know who's going to be using it. Anyways, a lot of the user base still is consistent of bots. I still wholeheartedly believe that you're even going to see something from, you know, 40%, potentially plus of the user base might in fact be bots. You know it if you've got Snapchat, you get a bot request probably every day. It's pretty wild. Um, but again, it, it does benefit their business to have those bots, honestly, from their user base perspective, it makes it look better. So we'll see. I don't know. That's just my opinion on the matter. Manhattan, uh, if you see uh, uh, Oppenheimer, you might be interested in that one to see the project they've got going. Wednesday before open, Coca-Cola, <clears throat> very boring, but I love to see Coca-Cola report earnings. Very consistent. We saw PepsiCo report fantastic earnings last week. I think Coca-Cola is going to do pretty similar numbers here. I'm not shocked at all. Um, Thermo Fisher, Scientific, nothing crazy to say about them. Union Pacific, really don't have anything crazy to say about Union Pacific either. A lot of, lot of goods and services, well, that doesn't even make sense for them. A lot of goods being transported. So Union Pacific, I, you know, expect kind of good things there. We see trains going out of, out of, out of the wazoo lately. Boeing, you know them, you love them. It's Boeing. They're reporting Always a great one to look at. Uh, massive recovery you've seen from them just due to the fact that, uh, well, ticket price is rising. Delta posted a great quarter. We'll see what Boeing has to offer. I presume it's pretty similar, actually. AT&T, one that's actually recently reached a 30-year low, is trading ridiculously cheap. What are they able to do? The second of the big telecoms reporting here, they got to do something to get the stock going. So whatever they have to say in this conference call, they got to do it, right? They need to do something big with this earnings because the stock is at an all-time low, um, well, 30-year low, to be fair. Uh, dividends been cut. It's, it's, it's just a rough time for AT&T. There's no doubt about it. So they need something big from this report. Uh, ADP, following them, Pfizer, uh, uh, GSK, and then they've got CME Group. General Dynamics, um, pretty cool. Uh, Amphenol, definitely sounds like a drug. I'm not uh, not crazy. Their Old Dominion Freight Line following them. Hess, get a little bit of that Hessy, no doubt. I've heard a couple rap songs about this, so I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out. I've always followed some rap music, and they always be talking about the Hess. Um, so we'll see. Uh is that real? I don't, just, I don't know. Hilton, following them. I expect good things at Hilton, no doubt about it. I think people are still spending a lot on vacations, and they definitely are doing, they're just taking a lot of vacations to begin with, and they're spending a lot on vacations. People spend money that they don't have like crazy. Otis, to wrap up the day. Wednesday, after close, we've got my other focus here. Um, it's going to be meta, and you know why it's got to be meta already. Similar to Microsoft, first off, exciting company, but the stock's up 135% this year. You're telling me this thing's up 135%? That's crazy, up 76% in the span of a year over the last five years. Not quite a great story in all honesty, right? Not really as exciting when you look at the last five years. But hey, in the last year to date, really, you look at this, 135% up is massive. There's a lot of upward trend. You've seen actually just recently here, let's pull the month, just in the last week, there's been a pretty massive pullback of around 7%. Um, and again, it's a company that is trading at a little bit of a higher P ratio, there's no doubt. But hey, we'll take a look here because there's a lot going on. What are they going to mention in the conference call? Well, first off, this earnings report is going to be big into talking about threads. They're going to talk about an update on threads. I've heard some reports that user engagement has dropped off massively after the first week of use. Right? There's definitely a chance. We'll see what that looks like. Um, 
But another big story is going to be on ad rates. Yet again, the company was really struggling with ad rates from that perspective, and they've been recovering on a massive standpoint uh, as advertisers are really flocking back to the platform. We'll see what they're able to do, and I think it really shows here in the EPS estimate. 291 versus the 246 of a year ago. Expected 1181 this year versus 859 of a year ago. That's an incredible line. The company struggled for a little bit there. Now still printing money. Let's be real. This is a company known for printing money. They're, they always post ridiculous lines in terms of free cash flow, and I think this is the year they get back to that. I really do, and I think you see it in the numbers. Um, from a revenue perspective, actually pretty exciting here too. Expected an 8% growth, $31.12 billion versus a $28.82 billion. Let's be real here. I actually think these are both lines that they'll beat on. I think this is a double beat, a beat on top and bottom. <clears throat> I'm pretty... Pretty actually confident about these results just because of what I've seen here, right? We've seen great demand on, on the apps themselves. Ad rates continue to, to, to grow. There's no doubt about that. Um, and overall, I just, I just think there's a lot of positivity going on here from this. The VR space as well. We're talking about the release of the next Oculus uh, headset, the Quest 3 going to be taking pre-orders. That's going to be a massive part of this call here as well. Hey, I, I'm kind of excited for these earnings. There's no doubt about it. Um, so keep an eye out for Meta. Then ServiceNow following them. Uh, Lamb Research, Chipotle, Mexican Grill. Always excited about Chipotle, man. Let, let me tell you, you get a freaking bowl there, a little carne asada. Mm -mm -mm. Toilet might not like it later that night. eBay following them. I actually used eBay for the first time in a long, long time during this quarter, actually, that they're reporting. So I'm making a big chunk of their business. Let me tell you, my 40 bucks I spent probably pretty big for eBay. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know. I, I, mean, I don't even know what to say about eBay. It's freaking It's boring. It's eBay. I didn't realize people still use eBay. I don't know how much they do, but we'll take a look at these earnings. That's for sure. I don't know how they're still around in this day and age. Vici. Properties following. You know Vici. I love Vici. I love Vici. I want to talk about this new expansions down into Texas, a little bit into Canada. There's a lot going on for Vici. We'll take a look and see what they have to offer from us here in terms of uh, really the main thing is going to be um, occupancy rates. That's the big thing we want to see is occupancy rates for Vici. That's what you look at. United Rentals, um, Arch following them, uh, American Water. I love me some American water, you know, better than shipping it overseas. A line, and then Rollins to follow them up. Stole Dow's little logo here, no doubt. I mean, it's literally just the exact same thing. You can tell the difference. One just put kind of a gray box around it. I don't know how that's legal, but they did it. To our Thursday, uh, that wraps it up for Wednesday, by the way. Then Thursday, we get into some freaking massive ones yet again. We've got MasterCard to start the day. Obviously, massive in that sense because we see Visa reporting earlier, but then MasterCard, you know, similar beast there. We'd expect similar numbers on that aspect. Again, I think credit spend is going to be incredible, but we do have delinquencies to worry about here as well. I'm excited for these earnings. AbV, never really follow these uh, biopharma earnings too much just because of the fact that they're, most of their business is pretty steady in terms of what they do. Um, they have a drug. People keep using their drug basically forever. That's just how it goes. Um <clears throat> So let's skip them. We'll go into McDonald's. Kind of crazy how expensive McDonald's has gotten lately. And I don't know what that means for the user base. I think usually driving by them, they're still pretty darn busy. But to be fair, uh, they're incredibly expensive anymore, right? It's, it's hard to actually get a deal without you using the app. You have to use the app to get any sort of decent deal from McDonald's anymore. Kind of crazy that we're living in a world like that with inflation. Um, but, hey, we'll see what the earnings have to say. Uh, app use is probably important for them, but we'll, we'll take a peek. Um, <clears throat> Mick, uh, McDonald's, then Lind. I don't know how you pronounce that one. Comcast, talk about boring, freaking Comcast. S&P Global. Um, yeah, S&P Global to follow them. Payment services, we love talking about them. Honeywell, um, yeah, nothing crazy on them either. Bristol-Myers Squibb. Call, uh, also going American Tower going and love these American companies. You know what I'm saying? HCA Healthcare, uh, Boston Scientific, uh, Northrop uh, Grunman, Hershey reporting. You love a nice little kiss, and I'm not talking about the chocolate, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Norfolk Southern, 
ST, uh, we got Carrier, and then Royal Caribbean to end the pre-market. Royal Caribbean, pretty excited. We saw Carnival Report earnings, so we'll take a look at uh, Royal Caribbean. Now, after close, we have T-Mobile. We got two um, two other uh, telecoms reporting before them, so we'll take a look on that one. Definitely excited to see it. Intel, definitely one of the bigger stinkers. This thing's down over the last year, probably at least 50% in terms of stock price. This thing's been stinky. We'll see what they're able to do because they really got to get people back into the stock. Yet again, also another one where dividends been cut. They've been known for dividend increases, but they've cut the dividend. The stock has fallen massively, and... You know, it, it's all about how they're going to spark growth again when they've got massive competitors in the game. The big hot names like AMD and NVIDIA. How do you spark the interest back into a stock like Intel? We'll have to see what the management has for us here. Um, Modelas, CP, um, CLA with a little Swedish going on there. Ford is reporting. All right, that's my last. You already know it. It's the last focus stock of the freaking week, baby, with Ford. And worth mentioning, Ford up only about 19% year to date. The reason I do bring this up, it actually recently reached typically what happens for them. And let's just look at the five year chart. I want to show you this. Um, it comes to a time in which this is a stock that very consistently reaches a point around the mid 15s, uh, and sometimes a little bit higher. But they reach the mid 15s, and then they promptly fall straight back down. Looks like they're in the current period of falling straight back down, um, and you can see that here in this this standpoint, reached about mid 15s, and has fallen down since then. Been pretty bummy. But we'll have to see. Again, we'll have to see what these earnings have in stock. Now, they're expected a $0.54 cent versus a $0.68. Cent. That's not shocking at all. I think we're still going to see inflation hitting these car companies significantly. And it's definitely going to be a major, really, headwind they face um, for several years, in all honesty. I really think it is. And there's just a lot more expenditures that come in play when you're talking about growth of the electric vehicle uh, industry. They're going to have to spend a lot more on research and development than they typically had before just how it's going and not necessarily as profitable right the vehicles there until they figure out how to create them at lower cost it's just not going to be very profitable for them so that's worth mentioning here now they are expected a six percent growth here in terms of revenue which is pretty massive for them right 40 billion dollars 40.23 versus 37.91 that's a massive growth rate for them a 6.1 percent we'll see what they're able to do on this one um not, no real insight on what this might look like, but hey, it, it is one I think that's worth looking at because this stock, I think either way, we're looking at a 5% jump either upward or downward on Ford, so keep your eyes out. Dexcom, don't know one of these chip manufacturers, exciting stuff there. Gallagher always has his hammer on him. Digital Realty, uh, Edison uh, International. Equity Residential as well. Now, Friday, we got a couple great ones here, too. Exxon Mobil. We love to talk about oil, right? Prices relatively steady here this quarter, and, and actually some that seem to have declined. So we'll see what that looks like for Exxon, but I think the biggest fo focus is going to be on the forecast that Exxon produces. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, Procter & Gamble following them. Talk about boring, but hey, they do consistent business. Uh, Chevron, again, nice to have these couple oil companies here reporting. AstraZeneca, um, Sanofi, AON, uh, Colgate, Palm Olive, another really boring one, by the way. Make a mean toothpaste, no doubt about it, though. Charter, how does Charter still exist? They provide garbage service in every facet. Charter Spectrum, worst piece of garbage ever. Charter, does people even get cable anymore? Anyways, if they did, Charter sucks. Sorry, I'm just airing out the, the dirty laundry I've got with Charter. It's And it's dirty, let me tell you. These underwear, they've been soiled with how Charter treated me. In fact, Charter soiled the underwear on my freaking person. They soiled the underwear that I was wearing. That's what Charter did. Sorry, that's rude. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Stop me. TC Energy, uh, Centene, T. Rowe Price coming up. That's pretty exciting, right? That's interesting. Um, Arm & Hammer. Uh, or Church and Dwight. Sorry, it's not Arm and Hammer. They make Arm and Hammer, but it's Church and Dwight company. Ultra boring, beyond boring there. Um, uh, <clears throat> CNHI Industrial, Booz Allen. Not exciting, by the way. Just not not the right kind of booze. Um, Aventor and Saya Freight Lines. And then Chart. That's what I got for you, folks. I hope you have a great one. I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. You have a great freaking day. Love you all.